So that we've, now that we've formally introduced this notion of a vertical asymptote and how it relates to infinite limits, we can look at a quick example. Um, so here's a function, f of x equals 3x over x squared minus 4. Um, notice that if we factor that denominator, it's a difference of squares, we get x minus 2 times x plus 2. Okay? So you probably have the idea by now, if you've done a few of these examples uh, involving vertical asymptotes, that the kind of the, the key feature in a vertical asymptote, aside from maybe you know, oddball examples like the natural log, the key feature that you're looking for is division by zero. Right? If you see division by zero, right, and, and if, it is, if it isn't canceled by a corresponding zero in the numerator, um, chances are you have a vertical asymptote. Right? So here we see that the, the denominator has zeros at minus, or plus 2 and minus 2, right? There's no corresponding zero in the numerator. Um, so we can, we can definitely conclude that the, um, this function has vertical asymptotes at x equals plus or minus 2, right? Because we have that division by 0. It doesn't cancel, so we have vertical asymptotes. Now, you might want to say a little bit more, right? Maybe you're not satisfied with just simply saying that it has vertical asymptotes there. You might want to say a bit about the asymptotic behavior, right? You might want to say, OK, at each of those asymptotes, what are the one-sided limits? Are we going to minus infinity? Are we going to plus infinity? Um, this is one of these places where it can be very convenient to give yourself a little number line, OK? We mark off the three points of interest. So the three points of interest are the two places where the denominator is 0 and the one place where the numerator is 0. And those are of interest because those are the only places where my function can potentially change sign. Um, now, one thing you might want to do when you're writing these diagrams to keep track of asymptotes versus zeros, give yourself a hollow dot for any zero that occurs in the denominator. Give yourself a solid dot for a zero that occurs in the numerator. Um, once we move on, we get to through things like curve sketching. Um, one, of the, one of the places where, where people seem to get messed up, even with, you know, I've seen students who've, who've done all the work, all the information they need to get, it, get the correct graph of some function, and, and they go to draw their graph and, and the thing goes completely off the rails because they get mixed up between zeros in the denominator and zeros in the numerator, right? A zero in the numerator is simply an x-intercept. Right? That's just a place where the graph crosses the x-axis. Zeros in the denominator, well, those are asymptotes. Right? Um, so often where people go wrong is, is they think, oh, you know, they start thinking zeros are bad. Zeros are always bad. But zeros aren't an issue in the numerator. They're only an issue if they're in the denominator. Now, what we can do here is you'll see that these three points of interest, they divide the number line into four intervals. In each of those intervals, you can choose a test value and you can figure out whether the function is positive or negative. So if I choose, say, x bigger than 3, um, I can see that all three of these factors are going to be positive. So the function overall is positive. Um, in this interval, we might test at, say, x equals 1. Um, or you might realize that when you cross 2, this factor is going to change sign, but the other ones are not. So either way, you realize that now this is going to be negative. The other two are still positive. So overall, it's negative. When we cross 0, now these two factors will be positive, or sorry, these two factors will be negative. This one will be positive, but negative over a negative cancels, gives you positive. And then finally, if you're less than minus 2, all three factors are negative, so the function is negative. Okay? So with that sign diagram in place, you can easily answer questions about one-sided limits, right? So if somebody says, what is the the limit as x approaches minus 2 from the left. Well, I look at my sign chart. I see that when x is to the left of minus 2, f of x is negative. I've got a vertical asymptote. I'm dividing by 0 at minus 2. So I know the function is growing without bound. The only thing I don't know for sure is, is it going to plus infinity or minus infinity? 
Sign chart says minus. All right, so I get minus infinity. All right. Similarly, if I wanted the right hand limit at minus two, again, I know that I know that my y values are unbounded. I just don't know if it's plus or minus, but I see the plus sign to the right of minus two. So I know my limit is plus infinity, right? Similarly, we can get the limits, the left hand limit and the right hand limit at plus two, right? And if we were trying to sketch, right, we would know that at least kind of as a first step towards a sketch of the graph at those two asymptotes, right, I would know that I have to go down to minus infinity, up to plus infinity, down to minus infinity, up to plus infinity, right? Just, just from that. And also, I have that intercept at zero, so I know that I probably have to pass through zero and do something like that. And in fact, I pretty much have the whole graph at this point, right? Even not with, with you know, looking at limits, but not, not doing any other calculus, not looking at derivatives or anything like that, I already have a pretty good idea of, of what's going on with the graph. The only thing I'm not quite sure about yet is, well, what happens as I head off this way or head off that way? Um, and to do that, we've got to look at limits where x goes to infinity rather than limits where y goes to infinity. Um, so we'll look at that in the next few videos.